to ride and equipment built by the J.I. Case Company over at Racine, Wisconsin. This year the Rock River Treasury is found to be the host site of the J.I. Case Collective Summer Convention. The J.I. Case Collectors Association was founded in 1985 by a group of people in the Midwest who were interested in preserving the agricultural areas that also cover the kingdom, Australia, and Canada. Each year they bring their summer show around to different places throughout the country. And this year the Rock River Treasury is proud to hold the largest big cross motor tractor that was built. This is a model 4072. What Case did is their engineers thought it would be a good idea to have all of the components in the engine carrying the same weight direction as the wheels. The you know OSS got a big four-cylinder engine that sits crossways in there. This was the famous cross-motor design that Case used for a number of years. Prior to the four-cylinder cross-motor design, Case had a very strong line of two-cylinder Case tractors. This is the smaller of the two that was you can notice all the original decals and striking are still on the track of this track that has not been restored. It's only been operated by Norm Miner out of Davis, Illinois. The next one is a smaller version of the crossover case tractor. Again, you'll notice the four cylinder engine sitting in the crossover in the frame right there. This is a 1919 crossover case. Next, we have another nice original example of a cross motor case. You notice how this is kind of unique, it's on what we call cut down rubber tires on the back. Most of the Chipotle tractors you see all came out on two wheels, but well, when the invention of rubber tires came out, you could take the tractor and they would cut off the spinning spin out of Austin, Minnesota. Don Don is very unique, case model LH. It was built in 1938. The H stands for Hesselman. This has got a Hesselman diesel engine in it. You do not see very many of these tractors. Don's got quite a collection of some extremely rare case tractors. Don's got himself quite a tractor parts system up there in Austin, Minnesota. If you guys are looking for case tractor parts, hook up with Don after the plane. He'd be more than happy to hook you up with some case tractor parts. Next we have Bruce Fetterston out of Clinton, Wisconsin. Bruce is on his case cross motor tractors. You notice a lot of these early tractors were painted very dull grays and green colors. Not only with the J.I. Case Collectors Association, but also the Northland Case Collectors, which is a Midwestern group of case collectors that were established back in 2000. Next we have Bob Gerber out of Cudahy, Wisconsin. Bob's on his case going on the wide front end. It also has the Eagle Dish on it. The three-point system was a very famous system. It was very popular. You could put a lot of implements to it. Case is their advertising gimmick. They called it the Eagle Dish. Old Abe, the war eagle, the ball famous ball. Now he's got in the wagon there, he's got one of the famous case eagles on a globe. Each one of the case dealers had the opportunity to have one of those on display at their dealership. When the case changed some of their marketing, they required all the dealers to return those to the factory. Some of the dealers chose not to return them, and those have become quite collectible over the last several years, and those will demand a pretty good money place. Now, if you notice these next couple tractors coming through, this is part of the series of case tractors, kind of a 30 series, a little bit from this one, an 800. But if you notice the headlights in the grill on this one, the headlights very much resemble that of like the 50. This is an A30 case, this is a diesel dual range drive. It's owned by his dad, Jim Keller, out of Potosi. These two guys are in the trucking business, and it's not uncommon for them to haul several semi-loads of tractors all over the country to these case collectors' conventions. This year, the case collectors' convention happened to be close, only a few hours' drive from their home in Potosi. So these guys made a few trips. They hauled in 14 case tractors to be part of the case display here at the Rock River Treasury. Next, we have Jim Keller out of Potosi. Jim's on his case 830 with the case 426.
Now earlier we saw the Case 1225, that nice original 1225, the two-cylinder tractor. This is the next step up from the 1225. This is a 2040 Case, same two-cylinder design, just a little bit bigger engine. There's two cylinders on this tractor, but they're opposed. So there's one piston that goes backwards into the cab, and there's one that sticks out towards the front. This is an early model of the 2040. This one's got the square-style radiator on it. That radiator is open on the bottom. The exhaust comes in at the top of the radiator and goes out the top. Well, that exhaust going out the top creates a draft to come up through the bottom, and that's what pulls the radiator on this tractor. This tractor's got a unique history to it. It was formerly owned by a gentleman by the name of George Hedke out of Rockford, Illinois. Actually, Davis Junction, I believe, was the town it was. George Hedke is on all the way from Vernon, Colorado, to be here for the Case Collector Show this weekend. They made the C was the smaller one and the L was the bigger one. This is a 1935 Case Model C, owned by the Hush family out of Yorkville, Wisconsin, and Clay Nash is doing the driving today. This next one is what we would call a Chase Cousin. This is a higher tractor built by the Rock Island Power. And in the mid-1930s, Chase purchased the Rock Island Power. So you might say that this was a fairly Chase Cousin. This is a higher tractor owned by Ed Schott out of Rockford, Illinois. This one's very unique. This engine actually slides back and forth in that frame. And there's a, a, a flywheel runs against that planetary wheel by each side. And that's how you've changed the ground speed of this tractor, is by sliding that engine back and forth against those planetary to make the tractor move faster. Who is Wisconsin that owns this tractor? That was modern technology at the time. Crab, the seat, maybe a little air dump and radio on there. Now these guys got GPSs. Air conditioning, all the kinds of controls you can think of. Here's our good case we got all around. This is our modern case tractor. Now a good chance to see early case power and modern case power. This is a case IH of 600 HD. Like I said, those guys are up there, they got the air conditioning on. They probably have the MP3 or their iPod coming up there. I'm not sure if that one's got GPS on it. This is the forerunner of the Chase line. This is, there are only five of these tractors anywhere in the world that still exist. We are lucky enough to have this tractor brought in for, for this display here at the Rock River Specialty. This tractor was restored a few years ago by now a gentleman by the name of George Schaap out of Frankfurt, Illinois. This tractor was sold a few years ago on Georgia's scale. And at that time, set all time sales records for purchase space of a tractor. It's now owned by Ken and Patty Hunter out of Carson, North Carolina. So this tractor also is very good to be able to go to the tractor. They have a big show down at Carson, North Carolina. This tractor is going to be a part of that at Carson, North Carolina. This is going to be a show by Justin Hurt out of Indiana. And Justin out of Indiana. And Justin out of Indiana. And Justin out of Indiana. Here comes the biggest of the Case steam engines. This is a Case 110 horsepower Case steam engine. This one has some unique history to it. This engine spends a bunch of its time here in the United States. Several years ago, it was sold and it was bought by a gentleman in Holland. So he had this engine shipped to Holland and he started the restoration on this engine. Well, something happened, either he lost interest or he ran out of money or something happened, but he ended up selling this, put it on the internet, and sold this engine. Well, a gentleman by the name of Mike Spahn from up at Baraboo area, I believe it's Leedsburg, somewhere up there, found this on the internet and was a successful bidder on this steam engine. Had to have the engine disassembled, put in a shipping container, and shipped back here to the United States, and it arrived in the Baraboo area in pieces and had to reassemble the steam engine. This is kind of a unique engine. There is no steering wheel on this engine. This has got power steering on it. There's a set of clutches that are running in there that as long as the engine is turning over, you can move that set of clutches back and forth and it'll steer the front wheels one direction or the other. This is owned by Bike Spawn. It was built in 1911 
and it's being operated by Warren Bellinger. Warren is one of our steam guys from over in Iowa, came over this weekend to help us out with the steam engine here at the Rock River Fishery. Usually if you get a chance to go to a show and see one scale model K steam engine, you're doing pretty good. Here at the Rock River Fishery this year, we've got three of them. This first engine was built by one of the founding members of the Rock River Threshery, a gentleman by the name of Walt Durst. Built this engine back many, many years ago. Walt is no longer with us, but certain pieces of his collection are. This is one of them. This is a half-scale case. It's, this is not a production steam engine. This engine was scaled. It's a scale model of a 50 horsepower case steam engine. It's currently owned by Charlie Hendrickson from right here at Thresherman's Park in Edgerton, Wisconsin. And Jeff Heller is doing the driving today. Now back in the early days when these steam engines came out, a lot of farmers didn't have the money to go out and buy one of these steam engines by themselves. So what they did is they formed a corporation and a bunch of guys would get together, pull their money together, they'd write up a little contract and they'd go out and buy a steam engine. And then they would travel from farm to farm and work together. Well this engine is no different. This is another half scale case. This is a half scale of a 65 horsepower case. This one came up for sale a few years ago, and four guys from the fishery here got together, put their money together, and Next we have Jeff Boomers out of Waldo, Wisconsin, and Jeff is on his half-scale case again. These are not production engines, these were hand-built steam engines. They took a full-size engine and scaled it down to one-half the size and built these engines. Jeff is one of the members of the Wisconsin Historical Steam Engine Association. It's a group of people that got together several years ago and formed a club for the preservation of our steam heritage and operating steam engines and taking care of them. And each year in September here at the Rock River Crusher Reground. All right, we've seen the biggest of the K steam engines. Now we have the smallest, or at least the smallest full-size engine that we have on the grounds here at the Rock River Threshery. This is a 1902 12 horsepower K steam engine. It's owned and operated by Phil Kovelmacher out of Germantown, Wisconsin. They said there was one size smaller than this. It was the nine horsepower. This, I believe, is the only operating 12 horsepower K steam engine in the state of Wisconsin. Now, there were two things the steam engines needed. They needed a constant supply of wood and water. So what Phil's got on the back here is he's got a case tank wagon. And you could buy these in different barrels, whether it was an 8 barrel or a 10 barrel or a 20 barrel tank. And it was, you could carry water in it, you could carry your fuel in the top, and that way you could well, be able to travel farther distances. On this particular engine, Phil just has a small storage tank for extra water underneath his feet. So it was necessary to have this tank wagon to pull behind. As I said, it's a 1902 KC engine owned and operated by Phil Polvamacher out of Germantown, Wisconsin.
sequentially in order. So over the course of production, Case built just over 35,000 Case steam engines, which was more than any other steam engine manufacturer out there. But these two 80 horsepower cases, this one here, they had phase where they built individual steam engines in the factory just east of here in Racine, Wisconsin. So it's a very good chance that these two steam engines were being built at the very same time, whatever it is, 80 some, 90 some years ago. But here they are again, how many years later, at the Rock River Treasury, these two engines that were built two serial numbers apart. This next one is also an 80 horsepower KC engine. Now, when you bought yourself a brand new KC engine, you had options just like you do with your car if you want power windows and door locks. It was the same way with the steam engine. So you've got on this particular engine, you've got the spark arrester on the top. That kept the sparks from coming out and starting the straw pile on fire. You've got the, can the full canopy on there to protect the operators and the engine. It's also got extension wheels on it, which are just like duals on today's modern farm tractors. It also has the contractor's fuel bunkers on it, which under their feet, there's a storage tank for water, and there's two big boxes there for your fuel, whether it be wood or coal. Those were all options that you could order for your brand new KC engine when you placed your order with the KC company. This engine is owned by Chris and Marla Rickard from Zion around the Wisconsin. Next we have another long time engine here at the Rock River Threshery. This is John Malarkey on his 1912 75 horsepower KC engine. Now some of you may have asked, like, why was Phil's engine only considered a 12 horsepower? This one is 75 horsepower. Again, it was an advertising gimmick. Prior to 1910, Case used all of the smaller horsepower numbers. You've heard us talk about 2040, uh, 3060, 1225. This steam engine, had it been sold prior to 1910, would have been called a 25 horsepower Case steam engine. 1910, they changed their advertising scheme and used the larger of the two numbers, which is a 75, and is owned and operated by John Malarkey out of Oregon, Wisconsin. Next, we have a, another long-time performer here at the Rock River Threshery. This is a 1917 Case 65 horsepower steam engine. This engine was formerly owned by Elmer Taylor. Elmer was a long-time member here at the Rock River Threshery, served on the board, as well as held office here with the Rock River Threshery. Elmer is no longer with us, but again, the nice part about this is a lot of the equipment from a lot of our longtime members are still here on display at the Threshery. This engine is now owned by Jim Holman out of Fort Atkinson, Atkinson Wisconsin. But Ron Taylor, the grandson of Elmer Taylor, is operating the engine here today. Kind of a nice little touch when you have the grandson of one of the owners, former owners of this engine, running it through the parade today. 1917, 65 horsepower case steam engine. As I said, Case built just over 35,000 Case steam engines throughout their course of production. Case engine number one is on loan to the Smithsonian. It has been on display out there in the past. I believe they have it in storage right now. But Case engine number one still exists, and like I said, it's on loan by the Case company to the Smithsonian. This is a very late engine. This one was built in 1923. They built their last engine in early 1924. But this is a very late 65 horsepower case engine. This is another longtime performer here at the Rock River Threshery. Owned by one of the longtime members, Ted Mudick. The engine is still part of the Mudick family. Mark Mudick, Ted's son, is the current owner of it. Again, this is another great example of an engine that has all of the options on it that could be ordered with your brand new case engine. The extension, the headlight on the front, the spark arrester, the full canopy, as well as the contractor's fuel bunkers. A great example of a 65 horsepower case engine with all of the options. Next we have a 50 horsepower case engine. This one is kind of like middle of the road kind of as far as the sizes are concerned. This engine was formerly part of the Lloyd Belden collection up in Minnesota. 
Well, we had a complete line of KC engines from the smallest to 30 horsepower engine all the way up to 30 to 40 to 50, 65, 80, and a 110. Lloyd had all of those engines in his collection at one time. Lloyd has passed away and the engines have kind of been separated and spread out throughout the country, but this is the 50 horsepower case out of the Belden collection. It's now owned by Ralph Nagel out of Slinger, Wisconsin. 50 horsepower case steam engine. <laughs> Next we have another 80 horsepower case steam engine. This is a 1917 80 horsepower case engine. It's owned by the Ash family from over at Franksville, Wisconsin. Connor Ash is behind the steering wheel today and Chris Rickard is helping him get us through the parade today. Yesterday we had all three 80 horsepower case engines out in the plow field behind another. Kind of a unique opportunity to have the engines together all following one behind another. Chuck, are they actually letting you run the engine today? Next we have the Balshers out of Pell Lake, Wisconsin. Chuck and John Balsh, father and son team, they got themselves quite a collection of steam engines over at Pell Lake, Wisconsin. This is a 40 horsepower case engine. 1917 40 horsepower case, owned and operated by Chuck and John Moss out of Pell Lake, Wisconsin. Next we have a Minneapolis coming through. Like I mentioned earlier, you needed two things with a steam engine. You needed water and you needed fuel. Well, there were a lot of places on engines to put water and fuel. Well, what Minneapolis did is they came up with this idea of a head tank. That big round tank is another place to store water on a Minneapolis engine. This engine is owned by Clayton Hendrickson, the man behind the steering wheel. This is a 1922 20 horsepower Minneapolis engine. The gentleman in the white engineer's hat operating the engine is Mr. Pete Berno. Pete Berno is the only remaining member of the original group that started the Rock River Treasury 57 years ago. Pete holds number number two of the Rock River Treasury, and Pete Barrett can still handle an engine as if he was just a youngster. But like I said, 57 years, Pete has been part of the Rock River Treasury. Next we have a two-cylinder engine. All of the engines that we've seen come through the place so far have all been single-cylinder simple engines. This is a two-cylinder engine. Nichols and Shepard was one of the manufacturers that was famous for that two-cylinder design. This engine is owned by the Wade Brothers of Whitewater, Wisconsin. Howard and Highland Wade were collect put together a collection of early steam and gas tractors. They were collecting this stuff before it was the cool thing to do. But Howard and Highland Wade, two well-known collectors for many, many years over at Whitewater, Wisconsin, Fortunately, neither one of them are any, no longer with us, but the family has kept a large part of this collection together. This is a 1660 double-cylinder Nichols and Shepard, owned by the Wade Farms of Richmond, Wisconsin, and it's being operated by Paul and Nick Anderson out of Milton, Wisconsin. <coughs> You'll notice as that one heads up the hill, it sounds very much like a locomotive with the two cylinders on that engine. This is a Keck Island and built Mount Vernon, Indiana. Now, if you get out to steam shows out in Indiana and out east of there a little bit, they have quite a few Keck Gondelman engines. But here in Wisconsin, there are very few Keck Gondelman engines around. This is a 19 horsepower single cylinder, single cylinder Keck Gondelman. This is another one. That Engine built in 1924. Like I said, it's owned by the Papalaki family out of Oregon. That's Henry 
tractor. All of the tractors that you see go through the parade today, at one time or another, one tractor from that particular model was sent to the University of Nebraska to the tractor test laboratories out there. The tractors were then run through the test laboratories were run through a series of tests to just confirm that they produced the horsepower and met all the requirements that the tractor manufacturers claimed. And when Avery sent this tractor to 4080 Avery to the University of Nebraska, it failed the test. It failed to produce the 4080 horsepower that Avery claimed. So what Avery did is they shipped this particular tractor back to the Avery class in Peoria, Illinois. And they overbrought the cylinder to put bigger pistons in it. And upon doing so, they determined that it was going to be way too costly to change all of the tools for the tractor. So what they did is they just changed the horsepower rating. So this same tractor later in production was called a 4565 Avery. So there are 4080 Averys out there, but this is the only true 4080 Avery that was sent back to the factory and brought over. This is a one-of-a-kind tractor, owned and operated by Dave Schneider out of Winnetka, Illinois.